Hey everybody, it's June 24th, 2019, time is 1210 CDT, and it is GeoRant time, it is GeoRant 107, <laughs> sorry about that, um, and today I'm going to talk about radiometric dating and how you go about in the field recognizing things in order to target date, okay? See, the thing is, there's this massive misconception uh, of about people who don't understand this stuff in detail like I do, that when we go out to date rocks, we just grab things, we just date them and go, Eureka, I have a number. That's all it is. That's not what happens. All right, first of all, I need to say some things about radiometric dating. Number one, carbon-14 is not the only method. A matter of fact, I don't even touch that method because it doesn't yield anything. I study Precambrian rocks. Uh, so it doesn't matter. It's, it's worthless there, okay? And there's a, over... There's a couple dozen different methods. I'm going to focus on uranium lead dating, all right? And I'm going to mention potassium argon as well, okay, in this example. But it's important to understand how rocks occur in the field, how they look in the field to make some interpretations of field so you can target your dating in order to reach your goals, okay? Things like you need to know stratigraphy, structural geology, sedimentology, a uh, little bit of geochemistry and geophysics in order to do this, to accomplish this task. These subdisciplines of geology do not exist in vacuums by themselves, okay? I'm going to take a hypothetical uh, road outcrop here and walk you through what you need to do to say there's an old question, all right? And you're gonna get dating of some rocks in order to answer said question. Okay, so let's get to it. I made this, this is an outcrop, okay? Doesn't matter where, it's a road cut. Say the road cut was cut 10 years ago, all right? For a new road that goes through this way. Um, this unit has never been seen before. This is the first time. The controversy is this was dated 20 years ago, has a potassium argon date of 1019 plus or minus 13 ma ma is millions of years ago so 1019 is 1.019 billion okay so you have this date all right this was not exposed it's never been seen in outcrop never been noted before there was controversy about this here here you have stromatolites and the age of this is in question all right um say people have tried to date it and have come up with nothing so we'll say there's some people that th thought it was shortly after this and other people think this might be almost cambrian all right just neoproterozoic you know right up to that 541 million years or whatever okay so that's the controversy you're trying to answer and this new road outcrop is going to answer that for you okay so we're going to try to get through this as quickly as possible i'm going to try to make this under 10 minutes but i doubt that's going to happen okay so you see these units here all right this is the outcrop how it looks you'd be looking at it this way this is what you're going to draw on your field notes we'll say these are the actual colors i did screw up here i meant to put a red zone here which i'm going to get into like a reddish brown at the top of the dolo stone which i didn't do but i'll get into that in a little bit here okay now, when you date rocks, say this is undeformed, there's no evidence of metamorphism here at all, okay? You don't have things like metamorphic minerals forming. There's no kyanite, sulmonite, none of that stuff. There's no hydrothermal activity in the area that you've studied. So, so, so you, these rocks are not metamorphosed, but that doesn't answer. There's still some open questions. How do you know? One of the basic laws of geology says, law, uh, says layers of rock deposited at the surface are deposited relatively horizontal. There is such a thing as initial dip, like in terrestrial environments and alluvial fans and, and up against nonconformities like you see between the Precambrian Baraboo Quartzite and the Cambrian Tunnel City, um, but those are rare. The vast majority of the time, you're going to get something like this, all right? But how do you know that this wasn't deposited like this and tectonics in the area hasn't flipped it over? All right. Now, there may be just from the vast walking around and stuff, you know that this is stable craton and that this, you know, just from that, that this isn't. But there are indicators in this outcrop to help support that hypothesis. OK, that that this is this is A is the oldest, followed by B, C, D and E and F. OK, so. All right. So you've got this and you need to answer the question about the age of this. So what do you do? Well, first, you're going to do your stratigraphy. You're going to do your sedimentology. You're going to look 
your, and your structural geology, you're going to look for things that would indicate which way is up in the sequence. Was it deposited this way? Was it deposited this way? And another question, do these intrude your sedimentary package, your B, your C, and your D? Or is this a lava flow, then this was deposited, then this lava flow came on top of that? See how complicated this is becoming, okay? You need to answer these things in order to interpret the dates you're going to get. Okay, so here, you look at your unit A, all right? And you see things like this pitted surface, which the, some of those pits may be raindrops. But that, that, that's a really big interpretation. You need to do some analysis, but we can't do that. But we see something else here. These little fluty things are pipes where gas bubbles in the lava, as this lava was molten, have tried to escape towards the surface. So that indicates that this is a lava, surficial lava flow, all right? And it's coarser here than it is here, but it's still all basalt, it's all fine grained. So that also clues us in that this is a surficial slow flow. Then we get this A2, okay, which is this mineralized zone, this we'll say sericite with some other little stuff in it. So this, but it's not a true paleo soul. There, there's, there's no obvious incorporation of this rock, at least not at this outcrop. Uh, there's no obvious incorporation of A1 into A2, but that does, doesn't mean there is. Okay, but you do have some sort of unconformity here. So you have two lines of evidence, mainly the pitted surface and the pipes that this is the top of the bed and this is a lava flow not intruded because if this was intruded into a sedimentary package this wouldn't be here you would see an undulating contact you would see a you would see a baked zone here and at the bottom which isn't exposed okay and um you would be able to tell okay so so that's one line of evidence that this is up okay as well so now you're going to go to here you're going to go to unit b what you see here is you see this sandstone. It's an arcose, which means it's feldspathic rich. It's got a lot of feldspar in it. We'll say it's coarse grained. Uh, and it looks a lot like some of the stuff from here. So you see these ripple marks. These are ripple marks. Well, that, that doesn't answer whether this is up or this is up because they can be molds or casts. But you do have the cross beds here. All right. And this type of cross bedding this way is generally up. Okay. So then you have your C1 here. So you probably have a diastem in between B1 and C1, but not a large amount of missing time. Okay, just some amount of missing time. And now you have your stromatolites. Okay, and these would be carbonaceous, either, you know, limestone or they would be, um, or they would be uh, dolostone. Okay, now these are the nice mounded ones. There's beautiful mounded ones at Horseshoe Harbor up in uh, uh, the UP um, up there that are a lot like this and these are mounded and they are alive today so we know that they form mounds the mound head the mound is up okay so that's a sedimentary structure primary structure along with the ripple marks that this way is up okay so now you have this telling you which way is up based on your uh, pipes you have your cross beds and you have your stromatolites. You have three lines of evidence that this way is up and this thing was deposited in a normal sequence with the oldest at the bottom, the youngest at the top, okay? So now you know that, see, see, this is getting complicated here, okay? So you have, you know which way's up, but this, no one's seen this before. Is this a surficial flow, okay? Or is this intrude this? Okay, well, you say, remember how I said I forgot to put a red line here <laughs> at the top here? Um, say that it's there. Sorry, I just had to use your imagination. Um, so that would be a baked contact, okay? But that doesn't answer whether this intruded this or not. Um, in order to see if this intruded a sedimentary sequence, you could also look for things like roof pennants and stuff from overlying not exposed sediment like if you had sandstone chunks in here and stuff like that and there was a sandstone above it but anyway that's neither here nor there this is all you have but you see in the bottom here you see it's kind of bluish it reacts say you know the, the dolo stone is going to react with hydrochloric acid say this does too at the base but this part does not 
okay? And you see you have like these flow structures that aren't present here. This is a strong indication that this is a surface flow like this. This is surface flow, this is surface flow. This is, these two igneous units, this black rhyolite, by the way, there are black rhyolites. Um, there's one in Baraboo, um, Baraboo area. But these are your bread and this is your, this is your meat and your mayonnaise and stuff like that. All right. So you've determined which way's up, you determined what kind of rocks you have, and, and now you're going to date things. All right, we're already over 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna do your uh, uranium lead. And as I've said before, when you do this, to do that, you're going to have to pull what are called zircons. Zircons, I mean, you can use things like micas too to get dates, but we're just gonna focus on zircons because zircons are very resistant to weathering and they're found in almost every rock. It doesn't mean you can always get a date because you kind of want coarser grained rocks too because that will lead to larger zircons in the make, you know, within it. Smaller zircons are hard to manipulate. It's near the limits of our equipment and our measuring techniques. So, you have to decide what the date. So you know you're going to redate this, all right? And you pull some zircons from A2 as well. You pull some from B. You don't bother with C1 because it's a shale. It's probably not going to yield any. Or C2 because it's stromatolites. It's carbonaceous. It isn't going to yield any. C3 is also a fine-grained rock, so you're not going to deal with it. And D is also a carbonate, so you're not going to date that. But then you're going to date this. You're going to grab some for this too, okay? So... You do it, you run your time. I'm not gonna get in any detailed things about how this process works, but I'll give you results, okay. So 20 years ago, unit A1 has a potassium argon date of 1,019 million years ago. You, your uranium lead, gave 1,024 plus or minus three million years. So you're within that 20, old 20 year, that old 20 year dating. All right, you're within that margin of error. All right, so these two agree well with, so the two dates, the ones from 20 years ago and the one you just took agree really well. So you have a solid age for this. A2 didn't yield any usable zircons. You know, you say you saw some big coarse grains in there, but there just weren't any. Most of it was fine grade, you couldn't use it. Okay, but your Arcos does yield some and then you get 50 of them out of there because it's a very coarse grain. You get a lot of good zircons. Now, these are detrital zircons. You cannot directly date sedimentary clastic rocks. You cannot do it. All right. Any zircons you pull, the young uh, a sedimentary rock, anything you date, okay, its youngest zircon is as old as that rock can be. The sedimentary rock cannot be older than its youngest zircon. It can be a lot younger than that, but it can't be older than that. Okay. So it's starting to rain a little bit. So with that in mind, these zircons, you, you get, and if, if one, you get one weird one, I mean, that's, the, that's an anom anomaly. But say you pulled 50 and you get 25 that cluster around 1,140 um, plus or minus 2 million years. Okay. So that's your cluster. That date is where you get your peak, most of them are there, but you're, you get five that all date, and this is the youngest, these five will be the youngest, that all date 1,025 plus or minus 1 million years. So that's as old as this can be, is 1.025 billion years. It cannot be older, okay? So you got some zircons there. So you date this, all right, and you get 1,013 plus or minus 2 million years, okay? So now you have a bracket, all right? Do the, do the dates agree? Yeah, they do. You have low margins of errors and the dates all agree. This would be your oldest, just like you determined in the field, and this would be your youngest, just like you determined in the field. And also proves, well, as proof as we can get that these are superficial blows, okay? So what is the age of this sedimentary package? Well. Now you have brackets, okay? It's not much younger than this is. And matter of fact, it includes zircons that are likely from this. It also includes some older ones from 1.14 billion years ago, cluing you in that there's some another igneous source somewhere where these were derived from. It's just not exposed at this outcrop. But your youngest zircons are likely from this unit. It's within the margin of error, okay? 
So you have 11 million years to deposit this, okay? Any unconformities that are within here, and unconformities in geology, they look like sine waves. There's a little squiggly line like that. I did not do that here because you wanted to determine where your unconformities were here. So, um, so this is only within an 11 million year window. And since this unit is only about a meter, a little less, stromatolites do take time to grow, but they do not, um, they, they don't need 11 million years to form a tiny, you know, one foot layer like that, slightly over a foot. So just within that 11 million year window, probably within a couple million years, this lake bed formed on top of this lava unit before it was covered by this lava unit. Um, lakes aren't usually long-lived things, especially shallow lakes that would grow stromatolites in them. So, 11 million years is as good as you can get, but you do know that there is some sort of unconformity here because you had time for A1 to be deposited, but probably not a lot of time because this wasn't highly weathered, okay? But it may have been a little bit. So you can date the stromatolites to within 11 million years. They form somewhere between 1.013 and 1.024 billion years ago. And I'm gonna show you the back of this so you can just see, see what I wrote there. All right, so that's how this works. Sorry, it's starting to get really rainy out there, so I'm gonna start yelling so you can hear me. So that's how this stuff works. See, this, this dating thing isn't this guesswork, okay? I mean, you can do things like, you know, the potassium argon was done 20 years before, then confirm it with the uranium lead. You need to understand the field relationships and the rock types. If you can't tell a rhyolite from a dolo stone, you're not gonna be able to do anything, okay? <laughs> So, and you and see, you need to know which, which rocks and their field relationships are younger to which in order to target your dating. See, this stuff does not happen in a vacuum. I hope that explains a lot to you. I covered a lot here. We're coming up on, we're at 1709 right now. So I'm going to cut this off. But if you have any questions, I, uh, just leave them below. I hope you enjoyed this because I've been wanting to explain this for a long time. All right, but anyway, that's it. I'm getting out of here before I get pounded on, and I hope you learned something.